My father was an American history teacher in Snyder High School in Jersey City. So I grew up learning kind of some of the lesser known facts and contexts around a lot of historic events and some not so historic events. I learned uh, things that I might not have remembered at the time, but that stuck with me because there was additional context. The Civil War was about more than just slavery. There was all sorts of political stuff going on in the Revolutionary War, and the Civil Rights Movement was more than just Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, and, and some, some other things. There were some very significant things that I was beneficially exposed to as a result. So I've come to think of history in, in those terms. And it, it occurs to me that today, on behalf of everybody that's here, it, it's a good opportunity to reflect on some of the bigger contexts of what happened 61 years ago. And, and some of them are pretty striking. Uh, so, so the thing that strikes the most is that at that time in history, you had a direct impact on the timeline of changing the status quo. And, and it was put down in your book, a, uh, resulted in a significant change in the plight of colored people. The plight of colored people. At the time, that literally meant people's lives every day. People suffering every day. What I think of as an, an injustice quotient, the status quo was changed and the acceleration of that change started and was catalyzed by, by you and, and the actions that you took 61 years ago today. Now, what does that mean? That means that when that changed, people stopped dying. There were, a, there were, there were numbers of people whose lives you literally saved because you acted as you did. Now, as significant as that is, and we all know how significant it is, there is other context. That's kind of how I was, how I was raised. And what, what occurred to me was your words when you were being arrested. It's my constitutional right. Those words spoke of a peace document. Those words came from somewhere that you had to learn something. And one of those contextual important elements of what you did 61 years ago is in one of your favorite teachers, Ms. Geraldine Nesbitt, who was an English teacher, but went out of her way to teach you and your classmates and inspire your classmates about the Constitution, about the Magna Carta, about the Articles of Confederation, about all of these things without which you would not have been empowered to do what you did, to accelerate and save lives. So there is a bigger, broader picture here where peace educators, peace education played a very important role in saving lives. Now, all of that is, is legacy enough and an and amazing legacy. But truly, that's only half of the picture. Because where we stand today is we stand at a point in time where, because of the peace lights and, and my journey kind of that just serendipitously is happening as we speak, I've been exposed to folks within the African Union and various other communities where peace education has been called for in the agenda 2063 for the African Union. However, there is no specific timeline that is laid out to implement that. And what, what I'd like to tell you is that your impact continues today and into the future because there is a, an enormous amount of inspiration that is being taken by this organization, and me personally, when I have these discussions, to provide your example of how your actions saved lives based on peace education that you received and benefited from, and how that really needs to be rolled out around the world, particularly in the 54 nations of the African Union, 2.2 billion people, the most conflict-ridden area in the world. And surely, your actions of 61 years ago will indeed be felt, realized, and appreciated by 
generations to come in the African Union and around the world. So thank you very much. It's my honor to be here, and congratulations.